Hello and welcome to this next episode of my YouTube series, Being Effective with Upnote. Now in this episode, we're starting a new mini-series, Building a Second Brain in Upnote. Building a Second Brain is the, the mind child, if you will, of a guy called Tiago Forte. He's very well known. He's produced numerous blog posts, numerous articles, YouTube videos, podcasts. He's even written a book all about this idea of building a second brain. He also had a really successful cohort online course. The basic principle in building a second brain is actually David Allen's idea from Getting Things Done. The mind is a great place for having ideas, but a terrible place for holding them. In Tiago's system of a second brain, the brain in your head, your first brain, is freed up for having ideas. And then you have a digital second brain that is dedicated to holding them. But Tiago, he actually goes a step further, I think, than David Allen does. Because this isn't some dusty old cupboard or filing cabinet where you stick all of the stuff that you want to store, never to be seen again or anything like that. No. The whole point of the building a second brain system is that a lot of this stuff is going to be accessed and it's going to be used again and again and again. So one of the principles is you don't store information based on where you found it, but you store it based on where you're next going to use it. And we'll come on to that later. And as we go through this mini series, building a second brain in Upnote, we're going to be looking at each of the different aspects of the second brain system and how you can do this within Upnote. Within the second brain system, Tiago has these two acronyms that are really, really useful for setting the whole thing up and for running the system day to day. The first one is CODE, C-O-D-E. And that stands for Collect, Organize, Distill, Express. Now, having all of this stuff well organized, he would say, is actually going to help with the having ideas as well, because our first brains, they're excellent at recognizing patterns and joining up all of the dots. And the more dots we have, the more our brain is able to join them up and recognize the pattern. And the more we're able to create new ways of looking at things. So organizing things based on where you're going to use them is a key principle of the second brain, because you'll put all of these notes that you might have taken two, three, four, five, six, ten years ago, and you'll bring them together into the place that you're going to use them. And thus, by seeing all of this historical information that you've gathered, you'll be able to join up those dots and it will help your first brain spot the patterns and expand your ideas and develop your thinking. That's the premise behind code. You collect the information, you organise it, you distill it and then you express it. And we'll think more about all of those different aspects of code, collect, organise, distill and express in a future episode. The next acronym that Tiago has, it really sits inside that organize, and that is the acronym PARA. P-A-R-A. -A. Projects, areas, resources, and archives. The whole system is built around your projects. Your projects, these are the things that you're working on right now. They have a definite conclusion and a definite endpoint in mind. Your areas would be sort of what you might think of as areas of focus. These will be the main areas of life that you need to keep on top of and give your attention to. They're important and you need to make sure that they're moving forwards. These aren't your mundane routines, the day-to-day -day things, but these are important areas like your family, your health, and likely some areas that relate to your work as well, which will all depend on what your job is. Resources would apply to any kind of supporting material or record that you might have that you want to have at your disposal for future projects and future areas. This could be things like recipes. It could be things like notes on books that you've read. It could be articles that you've collected. Anything like that, videos, sermon notes, you name it, these would all go in your resources. It's information that is there for the taking in the future when you need them. And then lastly, your archives is where you keep everything that you don't necessarily need right now and you don't see yourself needing it anytime soon. But the great thing about the second brain system is you never get rid of anything. It's always there if you need it in the future. So what you might do is archive projects that you've completed. 
and stick them in your archives folder, for example. I've been using Upnote now for about two years. It's my notes application of choice. And the more and more I use it, the more and more I come to the conclusion that Upnote is the perfect application for building a second brain. It's packed full of features that really help you with each of those different areas of collecting, organizing, distilling, and expressing your information. It's really easy to organize your notes within Upnote. And so what I'm gonna be doing over this mini series is I'm going to go through each of the aspects of the building a second brain system and show you just how Upnote is really well suited for use in this system. As I said, we'll dive into the detail of setting this system up in future episodes, but for today, I just wanted to show you some of the strengths that Upnote brings to the table when it comes to building a second brain. Now, the first one, when you're working on a computer that I love, is the global keyboard shortcut to create a new note. I'm on a Mac, and if I press Command Option N, it'll bring up this new text box for me to type and create a note in. And then I can just get rid of that. And then the next thing is this uncategorized section that you have here. That is where all of your new notes go when you create them. Another great feature that Upnote brings for that sort of capture experience one of my favorites actually is paste to upnote so you can go to any website or any document that you have and you can select a whole load of text let's just do um, this paragraph here from this blog post you can copy it to the clipboard in the usual way command c and then on a mac con command control option v pastes it into a new note in upnote that's a great way of getting stuff in upnote also has a bit of a basic web clipper there we go. That's come into my uncategorized section there. And on your mobile phone here, you've got various uh, widgets, one of which is a quick note, quick capture widget. So Upnote has great features for getting stuff into your system. Within the editor itself, you've got a whole load of other stuff. I'm just going to make myself a bit, I'm going to move myself over here for that sort of organization system. So you've got notebooks, you've got uh, inline inline tags that you can add in, inline tags. You can put in links to other notes. So let's go for this thing that I've just, this blog post that I've just put in and then click to that note. You've got your backlinks there. So you've got links and backlinks for organizing. One thing that I really love about Upnote for this kind of thing is your notes can actually be in multiple notebooks. So we can put it in here and we can put it in here. I'll explain more when I come to talk about it, but this is really helpful for the para system because notes being in more than one place means you can have it in your project notebook where you're gonna use the note without actually moving it from your resources or your archive. And that is a key feature that Upnote brings for this system. And then lastly, for the sort of the distill and the express, you've got various editor options that just make it really powerful. So I could, if I wanted to, turn this into a quote. And I can change the color of that to make it really stand out. You can change the color of text to make it stand out. Uh, you can highlight it to make it stand out. There's loads of options within the editor that are really powerful for what Tiago Forte would call distilling, finding the essence. And then a few options as well that make Upnote a great writing tool. But even with all of that said, and even with the power that this app brings, it is important to recognize that Upnote does have some weaknesses. The web clipper isn't that great. It does the job, it will clip things into Upnote, although sometimes, for reasons that I can't understand, rather than actually clip the content of the web page you're looking at, it'll just clip the bookmark. There are certain other things that, say, an app like Evernote can do much more powerfully with its web clipper than Upnote can do with its, and the web clipper is an area that I really hope they give attention to in the future. The search functions within Upnote are what I would describe as perfectly serviceable. They do what you expect them to do, but they don't have any bells or whistles. There's no Boolean search. You can't search within handwritten documents, for example, like you can within Evernote. It's functional search, but it's a bit basic. But for me, the biggest issue with Upnote at the moment is there's no way of capturing emails into Upnote. 
short of a straight copy and paste of the text or content. You can't forward any emails to Upnote, you can't clip any emails to Upnote, nothing like that. And that for me is a big weakness of the application. So please do join me on the rest of this series as we build our second brain in Upnote. Next week we're going to be thinking about code, collect, organize, distill, express. Particularly we're going to be focusing on the first parts of that and then we'll look at the other parts in future episodes. And we'll see how to do this and build a second brain within Upnote. So please do like this video if you've liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see those videos for how to build a second brain in Upnote. And we'll see you next time on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.